So, lesson nine, arithmetic revision. We will be able to revise for arithmetic. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover all of the main, I, I really sort of aimed for questions that students find difficulties in. So therefore, and usually struggle with a lot. So if you're like one, if you are hoping that I'm going to go through questions like this, then you will probably find that I'm not going to do that. So I'm only going to be going through questions that I find students find very difficult or questions that I think are challenging or questions that I think maybe we didn't cover very well. So a lot of this stuff at the start where we did this, where we did like two to the power of three equals eight, you know, I'm not going to go through that kind of thing, especially because like you can just put those ones into your calculator and get an answer. But what we will be going through is seven examples. Now, if we get to the end of this and you're like, sir, can you do a question about this? Then by all means, great. If you guys want me to re-explain something, then go ahead. If you guys want me to go through something, the more input that you guys give me, either by chat or out loud, the more useful this lesson will be for you guys. Um, but yeah, after that, I'm going to leave the Zoom open. If you guys want to as well, if you want to have your own private session, I can actually assign you to a breakout room and then you can have your own like private group and I won't intervene, but you guys can like invite me in if you need help. But let's crack through those seven questions, so seven examples. You don't have to write these down. There's no pencils here, but if you want to, you can. The first question I thought would be a percentage change question. These are questions that I haven't done since back since when we got started. So let's grab a look at this question here. Two antique books were sold at auction. Book A was bought five years ago for 18,000 and sold for 24,000. Book B was bought five years ago as well for 13,000 and sold for 19,000. Which book showed the greater increase in value compared to its original worth. Now, whenever you look at percentage increase or percentage decrease, it's always compared to its original worth. So uh, let's, let me show you what I mean by that. Let's start with book A. So now book A, we know we bought that book at $18,000. And we sold it for $24,000. And you might be like, just for the record here, you might be like, oh my gosh, like who would buy a book for $24,000? I think a first edition um, Alice in Wonderland can go from for upwards of about $500,000. But don't quote me on that. Like, I'm not 100% sure. So, yeah, you can get special antique books for like this price. So, what we're going to do is how we calculate the increase in value is we go, well, 24,000 minus 18,000 equals 6,000. So, we've increased in value by 6,000. And so, the question is, which one do I go? Do I do 6,000 over 24,000? Or do I do 6,000 over 18,000? Which one of these is correct? Can I get you guys in chat to let me know? Which one do I do? Or you can say out loud. It's completely open to um, I've got one answer. Let me give one more before I give you guys the correct answer. Do I do it over 24 or over 18? Come on, I'm, we've got a bit Cindy, I've got Alex, I've got Lena, I've got some of the big chatterboxes in the class. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, so the two, uh, yeah, so three people have got that correct. It's over 18,000. Again, why is compared to its original price? 
its original price was 18000 You always compare it to its original price. No matter what, either went up or it went down, you always compare the change to its original price. So 6000 divided by 18000 times 100 gives us 33%. It's increased by 33% of its original value. Well, that is the percentage increase. Let's look at book B now. Now, book B is... Book B was bought five years ago for 13000 so it's a bit cheaper. And then sold for 19000 Okay. Let's calculate this. So 19000 minus 13000 that's going to give us 6000 again. So it's the same increase, but is it the same percentage increase? Let's have a look. Let's find out. So what we would do is we compare the 6,000 to the original price, the original price being 13,000. So we go 6,000 divided by 13,000 times 100 is going to be 46%. So looking at those two answers, it appears that book B increased in value more than book A. So I'm going to write that down the bottom here. Book B with a percent increase Um, now of 46% had the greatest, uh, whoops, increase in value. My bad guys. Sorry. I ran out of space. So yeah, that's how you do that type of question. You should really write down an answer like that. I should have started all the way on the left so that I could fit it all in. Are there any questions on how to do this type of question or are we okay with doing percentage increase now? Or percentage change? Now this applies to if you're doing percentage change and it's a decrease, that's fine you would just you would end up with you know um a negative value on top which is going to be a reduction in percentage and so you might say well which one of these had the greatest loss of percentage what i find interesting about this question is that both books increased it by six thousand dollars but because book b is a cheaper book that increased by six thousand dollars that's why it's the better percentage increase and that's how we usually sometimes measure profit. We want to know, well, how much did we invest and how much did we get back out? Right, next question, original price question. These guys are really hard. I hate them, but I, and as I said to you guys, there is a formula, but I have, all, as I promised you guys in class, I've already forgotten that formula. So I'm just going to do this by bare principle. A table and chair set has been reduced to $850 after a 20% discount. What was the original price? So this is an original price question. These ones, guys, can be a little bit challenging. Now, how I do original price questions is, and I'm um, like, uh, don't show this. I, I know I'm recording this, but don't show this to other teachers because they might be like, why did you just remember the formula? Why did you? But I like to work it out from first principles. So what I would do is I'd say this, okay, let's call that original price X. Okay, so we started with X. Okay, cool. And what we did is we took 20% off 
x. So what we did is we actually we actually didn't take we 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 could write down twenty percent off, or we could write eighty percent of. So we know eighty percent of x is equal to eight hundred and fifty dollars. That's how I think of it. I go, okay, twenty percent off is the same as eighty percent of, because they have because it has to equal a hundred, right? Okay, cool. Well, I know 80% is the same as 0 0.8 times x equals 850. So if I now divide both sides by 0 0.8, and I cancel that there, that's going to give me this, x equals 850 divided by 0 0.8 which is going to be 850 divided by 0 0.8 gives you $1,062.50. That was the original price it was. So it was probably more likely it was 1060 and they just did some clever rounding at some point. But yeah, that's what we get for the original price. Now, ladies and gents, if you want to use the formula that I gave you when I taught this lesson back in the day, then by all means, make sure you've written it down somewhere. But as I've always promised, I prefer doing this by first principles. And this is a first principles approach. What I'm doing is I'm saying, well, I know how to take 20% off easily. So I'm just going to use that method here. Now, if you like doing the two-step method for taking 20% off, this becomes a little bit harder because what you would have to do is you'd have to be like, okay, we start with X and then we remove 20% of X, which is the same as saying X minus 0 0.2, uh, 0 0.2 X, which is the same as one minus 0 0.2 times X, which gives you, 0.8x. This is the long and painful way to do it. I would not do it this way. And that's also why when I showed you the percentage question, how I showed you there was two ways to find percentages off. The first way, if you guys want to know, the first way is to do the first way to do percentage off is to say, uh, let's say we've got 10% off uh, 300, the first way to go, well, what's 10% of 300, which is going to be 30, and then go 300 minus 30. The other way is to go, well, whoopsies. The other way is to go, well, 10% off 300 is the same as 90% of 300, which turns out to be Put that into your calculator, turns it to be 270. Done. And that's why I showed you, because this method is the one that I use right here. Now, someone just put in chat an interesting idea, which I'm going to grab a quick look at now. The interesting idea was from privately from a student. Says, Another side question, not related to this question. If there's a question that doesn't specify what to round the number to, what would you like us to round the number to? Well, like or if it doesn't say what's around the number to, you should stick to the same rule that we do in maths, physics, chemistry, biology, two decimal places. If it doesn't say how many, round it to two decimal places. The reason we're rounding it to two decimal places as well is when you're dealing with money, we round it to dollars and cents. Um, it's two decimal places just usually good. But if it doesn't say, then just don't worry too much. Speaking of rounding, um, let's round this to three significant figures. So first things first, uh, significant figures and scientific notation were some of the main areas where students get in trouble. So the, um, 
the one, the first thing I'm going to show you guys would be just remember your rules for scientific significant figures. So if it's a trap zero, then that counts. If it's a trailing zero, then that doesn't count. And if it's a leading zero, it doesn't count unless um, it doesn't count at all. By the way, trailing zeros do count if you have a decimal point. So that's two, that's uh, three, sorry. And that, those rules can be caught up if you go back to this previous ones. If you guys want me to go over some more examples of this later on, after I've gone through the seven examples, then I can. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna round this guy to three significant figures. At the moment, it has, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight significant figures. And what's most important here is to actually count them, is to go, well, if we go, this is the most significant figure, number one, and this is the least significant figure. And the example that I gave when I was helping a student out with this the other day was I, I said to them, well, okay, if you have a million dollars and your friend has a million dollars and 10 cents, What's more significant, the million or the 10 cents? The answer being the million is more significant. So we want to round this to three significant figures. So let's do this. What we're going to do is we're going to, this is going to be a weird way to do it, but still, we're going to do the first one, the second one, the third one, and the rest of them we're going to ignore. So that means that what we're going to have is we're going to have a one, two and then the rest of them we replace with zeros zero zero point zero 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 because the rest of them don't count but of course you would never write point zero 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 like that so the answer just becomes eight one comma two hundred or eighty one thousand two hundred or if you want to be super nerdy eight point one two times ten to the power of four but you don't have to be nerdy. You can just write 81200. Questions coming in hot and fast from some students. Uh, don't you need to round up? Um, do I need to round up? Have I made a mistake? Oh, crap, I've made a mistake. Ladies and gents, um, you guys are correct. I don't know who, I, I'm not going to, because they messaged me privately, I don't want to pick on them. But yeah, I've made a mistake here. Uh, where I made a mistake is here. If you look at this fourth number to five, so that's going to round that two up to a three. So let's fix that, ladies and gents. I actually love making mistakes because it proves to you guys that I'm not perfect. And I really don't want anyone here going home and thinking, oh my God, Mr. Greer, he has so high expectations of me. He's just a genius in maths. Ladies and gents, I'm not a genius in maths. I still make mistakes. And that also means that when you make a mistake, you can be like, you know what, everyone makes mistakes. Saying that though, I don't want to make too many mistakes because I don't want you guys to think that I'm an absolute idiot and then I'll leave my class to go to Miss Toe's class because maybe you think that she's perfect or something like that. But no, um, we all make mistakes. But thank you for pointing that out. Make sure you look at that fourth number and round it up. If we were going to four significant figures, this is a bit of a bonus one here. You would do the. You wouldn't have to round it up because it's a four. So you would just write one, eight one two five zero point zero zero zero, and then just go equals to eight one two five zero. But yeah, let's jump ahead to the next one. So so far we've gone through one, two, three, four. We're now getting to the halfway point. Five, six, seven. We've got several questions here. So unit ratio, I thought this would be a good one to do, especially because I always forget them. I've made this one not about money because I usually just, you know, whatever. So my car can travel. My car can travel 220 kilometers using only 13 liters of fuel. My wife's car can go 300 kilometers on 18 liters of fuel. Which car is more efficient? So the first thing we want to do is we want to put this into a unit ratio. 
We have a choice here, ladies and gents. We can go uh, meters to distance, or we can do distance to liters. Now, there's no actual which one of these, there's actually no way to know which one of these is 100% correct. If you do distance to liters, what that will tell you is it'll tell you, you work at, you work out, okay, a different way to work it out. You get something like, oh, one kilometer takes this much petrol for this car, whereas one kilometer takes this much petrol for this car. I prefer liters to distance just because it's going to be a little bit more easier to say, well, how far can you go on one liter of petrol? That's what I want to know. Okay. That's why when I put, when I've got dollars to grams, I put dollars first. I want to know how much, how many grams I can get for one dollar. Okay. Um, you could go the other way. As I said, you could say, well, if I've got one gram, how much does that cost? But I prefer usually just this way of going about it. Um, so let's do my car first. My car has 220 kilometers on 13 liters of fuel. There's 13 liters to 220. So then I'm going to divide both sides by 13, which is going to give me 220 divided by 13 is going to give me 16.92. Okay. So, beautiful. Um, beautiful. Can I get you guys to calculate for my wife's car. Someone's already done it. They're already well ahead of the curve. But I can I get you guys, the rest of you guys, to give us a quick calculation and then I'll do that with you guys. So see if you can give it a try. Put the answer in chat if you do get it. Yeah, I want you guys to calculate it on your, I want you guys to get a little bit of practice first. I'm going to give you guys maybe, what, let's say a minute to do that and then we're going to jump. We're going to move through it. Oh, one, there are two private answers that have been sent to me, and both of those private answers are correct. Yep, cool. Hmm. And they also got the answer correct. Yep. I'm giving about 20 seconds more. All right, I'm switching to blue because my wife's car in reality is blue. My car is actually red. I've got a red Mazda if you've ever seen it. So same deal here. 18 liters, 300 kilometers. 18 to 300. We're going to do, that's going to become a one is to 16.67. Now, what we need to do now at the very end is um, compare them. We've got 16.92 to 16.67. Okay, so that means that one liter of fuel can get you 17 kilometers, whereas one liter of fuel can only get you 16.6 .6 kilometers. So that means that essentially my car is more efficient at. 16.92 uh, liters, kilometers per liter. Um, you don't actually need to write this bit of the, you actually don't need to write this bit here, that's not necessary. I'm just putting in there just to make sure that it, to show the examiner that I've 100% got the answer correct. If you just write my car is more efficient and you've got these calculations, then you're fine. Any questions how to do that? 
No. Three, two, one. Okay, we're going to power through um, because, as I said, so we've got three questions left. Erin, this one's a pretty quick and easy one, but just because sometimes students forget how to do it, Erin and a housemate want to split bills in a ratio of two is to three. If the water bill costs $150, how much did each pay? Well, easy, you go two plus three equals five. That means the ratio of two is to three becomes two over five is to three over five. Same ratio, haven't done anything, divide both sides by five. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by 150. That's going to give me 2 divided by 5 times 150 is going to give me $60 here and $90 here. We can um, 0 0.6 times 150, double check it. We can actually double check this also by just going up here. 60 plus 90 is 150. Beautiful, excellent, it works. Uh, and yeah, that's how you would do it really, really quickly. Um, I'm going to leave this up here for about a minute, uh, for 30 seconds, just for people to digest this, what we've done here. Uh, but this is just sharing amongst the ratio. This is the classic ratio type questions. The next question is also a ratio question, but yeah. Are there any questions about this? Okay, ladies and gents, we're getting up to the home stretch. This is the sixth question here. Um, a map is a ratio of one to 20,000. This is again another ratio. How far is 2.5 centimeters uh, from a map in real life? Because how do you do these? You might look at that and you say, sir, we didn't actually talk about this. But we did. We just, I just didn't necessarily talk about it using this as an example and that's one of the things that annoy students sometimes they come up to me and they you know they they whinge and they complain and they say so you didn't teach us that uh and the idea is i can't teach you every uh everything the thing that i need you guys to do is i need you guys to use your brain okay because that's the the idea is your brain um you might have be able to use your skills to apply to it so one is to 220,000 is a ratio. And so that 2.5 that sits here, that is on the map side of this, of this ratio, whereas the big number is going to be the real life. Because obviously a map is much smaller than real life. Um, so to, if that's 2.5, then all I've got to do is you're going to say, well, how do I turn this unit ratio into 2.5, I'm just going to multiply by 2.5. So if I multiply this bad by both boy by 2.5, 2.5 times 20,000 gives us 50,000. I actually put that in my calculator. I probably should have been able to work that out in my head, but you know what, whatever. So the answer is 50,000 centimeters, but um, can we improve that? The answer is yes. 50,000 centimeters, we're not going to measure 50,000 centimeters in real life. To go from centimeters to meters, I need to divide by 100. So therefore, that's going to strike out too. So that's the same as 500 meters, or if you convert it again, 0 0.5 kilometers by dividing that both of these by a thousand to go from meters to kilometers we divide by a thousand don't forget these conversions also don't forget these conversions as well so you know or even these conversions remember what we talked about how to do that this would be times 100 squared. This would be times 1,000 cubed. 
yeah, that's just sometimes questions might ask you to put them in units that make sense. Ultimately, you're not going to measure something out to um, you're not going to measure something out to centimeters, but you might measure 500 meters. You might measure 0.5 kilometers. Are there any questions on this? One question left, ladies and gents, in my seven examples that I wanted to do today. And that last question here is this one here. A drop of water, five times 10 to the negative two mils, and a glass holds, uh, and a glass, oh, this is a poorly written question, sorry guys. And a glass holds 4.8 times 10 to the negative one liters. How many orders of magnitude more is the glass compared to the drop? This guy has got a trick in it. It's got a dirty trick in it, so you've got to be very careful. Straight away, ladies and gentlemen, can anyone tell me what the dirty trick is, or can you guys not see it yet? Let me chat. If anyone, whoop, sorry. If anyone can see what the dirty trick is before I even get started, um, it's not the negative, that's not the negative, but someone did get it and I'm going to, I'm going to leave it because they wrote it privately. So I'm not going to say what it is, but we're going to see where the problem it is. So let's have a look here. I have five times 10 to the negative two mil and I have 4.8 times 10 to the negative one liters. Okay, so if I look at the orders of magnitude here, I can easily just go, I could easily just go, we've got an orders of magnitude of negative two to one. So that's in, that's in the, how many orders of magnitude starts? It's one order bigger. But many people have already pointed out that that is incorrect. Why is that incorrect? Because this guy is in mil and this guy is in liters. So there's a couple of ways we can fix this question up. And I'm actually going to do something that I don't normally do because, um, but I'm going to almost make this question more confusing. I'm going to show you why. We're going to turn the this liters whoa whoopsies uh, no, 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 no. hold on hold on hold on ah crap now i'm going to delete all those later on oh well sorry ladies and gents give me a second we're going to turn the liters into mil now to turn liters into mil you have to multiply by a thousand the, trick, the reason we know that is milliliters, mil means a thousandth. And if you remember all the way back when we talked about these, we talked about how, okay, if we want to go from liters to mil, then I do it times a thousand. And I actually gave you guys a piece of paper to help you guys learn how to do that. So what that means is if I go 4.8, a times 10 to the negative one times a thousand, well, that's just gonna turn into 4.8 times 10 to the power of two mil. Um, if you don't know how I did that, what I did is I did well, so thousands is actually just times 10 to the power of three, and three minus one is two. Now I can compare them. Now I can compare five times 10 to the negative two to 4.8 times 10 to the power of two. So two, how do I compare them? Like this, whoopsies, like this. Two subtract negative two equals four. The glass, is four orders of magnitude greater. 
We don't care about the 5 or the 4.8. We only care about this negative 2 and this 2. And the reason it's 4 is because to go from negative 2 to 1 to 0 to 1 to 2, we need to go up 1, 2, 3, 4 orders of magnitude. So that means it's 10,000 times greater. The other reason why I did this is because I wanted to show you guys an example with negative and a negative. Because, I, because a lot of people might turn around and, and say, oh, it's a difference of zero orders of magnitude. But no, it is at four orders of magnitude more. Now, could you guys have instead maybe converted the milliliters to liters? Could you instead have done that? And the answer is yes, you would, could. So if you converted the milliliters to liters, that would turn um, that would turn this one here into five times ten to the negative uh, five liters. And so yeah, negative five to negative one is still four. So that's how you would convert that one. And ladies and gents, that brings us to, firstly, just a little bit past the end of period. Uh, that brings us just a little bit past the end of period five, so just into period six. Um, I've also done six of them, seven of the biggest, hardest questions. I've obviously skipped over some stuff. I didn't talk anything about uh, area conversion. I didn't talk anything about um, scientific notation. I didn't talk anything about um, uh, converting. Um, I didn't talk anything about logarithms. You might say, why didn't I talk about those things? Because those are things that I feel like are either A, easy enough that you guys should be able to work them out on your own, or B, Stuff that requires the calculator and no thinking whatsoever. Those questions that I gave you require some thinking. You can't just put in um, the orders of magnitude, bang, and get your answer out. You've actually got to think. You can't even do the sharing amongst the ratio. You've got to do some thinking. So, ladies and gents, what we're going to do now is I'm going to say to you guys, if you now want to leave and go give those questions a crack out of the if you, um, you can even use the chapter view as well from the book. If you want to do the chapter view from the book, if you want to do the revision sheet. If you want to do one of the extra revision sheets, which there are three of, there are many things that you guys can do to 